What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 570 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast, Hot Tags of the Week. I am Tony Mango. Robert E. Felice is here. Hello, everyone. It is Thursday night. We're at 11.50. So by the end of this uh, podcast, it'll be tomorrow. Crazy episode of the Hot Tags. (laughs) Yeah, we're doing this at night again with um, the assumption that nothing is going to break over the course of the next... 12 plus hours or so when we would normally be doing it so well, the hope is that like they tape smackdown yeah so we know what's gonna like, happen a there crazy knock on wood yeah barring a crazy death or anything you know i think we're good i don't think that they're gonna be announcing anything different for crown jewel i think they probably would have at this point and we do know what happens on smackdown tomorrow, they are like just in i think they're gonna be in saudi uh so it's just gonna be the we're so thankful to be here our relationship has been doing so many great things. Look, we've we're on the lookout here. for the Iranian attack. <laughs> and like, you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of Michael Cole, who has, in fairness, covered wars, saying we're on the lookout for the Iranian. <laughs> um, so we're going to run down here what we feel like talking about. I'm going to give you an update on the champs giving tournament. We're going to talk about NXT releases, some trademark stuff and some upcoming pay-per-views that now have some more information behind them and so on and so we're forth. We're going to talk about Jeff Jarrett, which is going to be my favorite. <laughs> Double J is <laughs> AEW and other kinds of acronyms. <laughs> and uh, Cindy Lauper. We'll talk about her too. So strap yourselves in, drop yourselves some comments below and tell us your thoughts on what you think about all these topics. Make sure that you Hit that like button. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. Ring that little notification bell. That way you get to know when we go live for the post show coming up on the Crown Jewel pay-per-view point episode on Saturday afternoon. You got Redbubble and Public if you want to pick up some merchandise. You got that join button on there for the Patreon stuff and the YouTube channel membership. So the upcoming dark cast that we end up doing and the uh, Pick Your Poison tier and everything else that you can find on there are different ways to help us out. And to help us grow and to make sure that we keep doing this and uh, continue to bring you extra episodes of things like how we did that mock draft extra uh, episode this week. And I think we got a lot of positive stuff for that. So and that was I a lot of fun. You, it was one of the best funds. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do those all the time. And if you want more of those, then that is the best way to make sure that we do it is not only the direct pick of poison, but also just more and more subscribers, more and more dollar a month subscriptions and such so hey if uh 4, people that are on this youtube channel uh, subscribing to it if you did it a dollar a month four thousand dollars a month you imagine how many things i'd be able to upgrade and how many more podcasts we'd be able to bring you and the I'd time have another and paycheck you'd have another paycheck Callum would have another paycheck it would end up being something that i wouldn't bother to do a lot of other things on the side and maybe we would even get things like a couple movies that I had the trademark and I'm uh, not the trademark and stuff, but the website and stuff for, <laughs> um, I'm looking at the trademark the thing. Yeah. I didn't get any trademark for that yet, but, um, you know, I've been wanting to do that with Caroline and Hey, $4,000 a month for this stuff. I would be doing just all podcasts and article ideas and the hell with everything else. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I understand. Yeah. So it's marketplace stuff like that. Keep in mind, if you don't have the funds to do that, we understand. But even if you hit the share button on this, and you pass this around and you try to help us grow with more followers and everything, then that stuff can snowball. So if you are wanting to do that, maybe you tweet something out, maybe you post something on like a Reddit group or something, whatever it is that you think might get our names out there, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. So let's uh, start getting into some of these hot tags here. And I guess I'll start off with that champs giving thing I was talking about. Round one is down. Or over, it's not down, it's still up. <laughs> but uh, I stopped the responses when we got started here. And our update for that, heading into round two, this is what we got going on here. Because we're not going to do a dedicated podcast about the tournament. We might talk about it on like a dark cast or something, I don't know. But uh, we had some buy round things between the Million Dollar Championship, the Cruiserweight Championship, and the Hardcore title. We had a triple threat with the International Heavyweight Championship, the United Kingdom Championship, or the NXT UK title, and the European title, and some of the other matches. So what we ended up getting now, and what we got going on for round two, you've got the WCW title beat the Divas title. Why? 
I don't know. I actually voted for the Divas title on that one. And yeah, I mean, that lost. If I had to guess now, this is me guessing. If I had to guess, it's that, oh, you know, I just like the WCW title better because it's the world title and it's the big gold. I like the big gold belt better than I do the Divas Butterfly, the thing. Yeah, because I don't understand how you wouldn't just pick the Divas title. I think the Divas title, as I made a strong case for it in my uh, fantasy booking, I think it could still be a great title. Hot take, now several years removed, I think the term diva didn't have to become as bastardized as as it did. You know, there's nothing wrong with saying we're WWE superstars and WWE divas. Mm-hmm. Hey, like, I, the only excuse I can think of is the negative connotation to the word diva. But, like... But then again, so many people try to make that more of a positive than anything else, you know? So, whatever it is, people voted for that. And people also voted for the ECW title over the World Martial Arts Championship. That one's a little bit more, maybe I guess you just don't want to see a martial arts thing, but so like, I do kind of think maybe people are going with like the, I just like the WCW and ECW I, yeah, names. I just like this yeah. idea better. I have no emotional attachment to the Divas title. I have no mental attachment to the World Martial Arts Championship. I think a martial arts title in the modern age would be sick with the understanding of mixed martial arts mm-hmm. to create a championship specifically designed for that the wwe mma title yeah like the wwe uh, i don't know what you would call it or the the tough man whatever or something yeah i think that that could be kind of cool so that's why i got my vote but people went with ecw which means that in round two i'm going to vote against ecw and wcw i'm going to vote pro million dollar title over wcw and pro hardcore title over the ecw one well See, in a perfect world, we just merge the hardware title and the easy to title. Yeah. And it just becomes the extreme title. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to vote for Million Dollar and, and the hardcore as well. I think hardcore should be on its way back. As again, I made a case for in my fantasy booking yesterday. And it's funny how this all mashed up because I didn't actually anticipate some of this, but... Some of it, of course, was like based off of quadrants. So you got the hardcore and the ECW title against each other, basically the same. You got the light heavyweight championship against the cruiserweight championship, which I planned that one out. I was like, all right, I'm going to put everything that's kind of similar to the cruiserweight in the same bracket, because why wouldn't you? So I'll be going cruiserweight over light heavyweight, because I like that term cruiserweight better. I went with cruiserweight as well, but I do kind of like the term light heavyweight. Of course, let's be honest, it's 2022. Those terms mean nothing. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, Finn Balor is in the main event and weight limits don't matter. It's, we're all the X Division now. Yeah, it's not the same as when you have, like, boxing and, and all, and it's a legitimate division. WWE, the rules don't apply. Rey Mysterio can fight Omos. So it's funny. It's also, uh, you know, the big gold belt against the million dollar title, but also the European title against the NXT UK heritage cup. So that's that whole, um, it, it's international flair. It's, it's European. And I'm going European over that one, despite the fact that I hate that championship belt <laughs> because that belt's ugly as all hell. So I think the European title should make a comeback as I was almost made a case for in my fantasy booking. I'm going to say that as many times as I can, because <laughs> damn it, it was good. Um, <laughs> look, I'm a huge fan of the European title. I think there's nothing wrong with a tertiary title. Like literally just saying the everyone had a title to fight for in the Attitude Era. And I think that's one of the reasons why even the C tier talent is mainstream compared to anybody today. I just hate those location based belts. Like if it weren't for the fact that the Intercontinental Championship has been around forever. I wouldn't like the name Intercontinental Championship. What about the U.S. title? I don't like that either. What do you call your belts? I don't know. See, that's tough because I tried to figure this out before. I did a whole plan of like, what would I do if I could make my own company and all that? And I think that I had landed on something like the Platinum something or whatever championship. Like it's something where it would be like denoting like the gold, bronze, silver medal type thing. 
Okay. I don't remember exactly what it was. I'm going to try to find that on somewhere here. Uh, maybe this was under this set of notes. Uh, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't know where. Maybe I deleted this <laughs> whole thing because <laughs> I'm not finding this. Um, oh, no, there you go. Now I found it. But now it's just a series of mashed up notes. So I have down a few different ideas of like uh, that. It would definitely be a silver design to delineate that. I like the Grand Prix type name. I like platinum. I like prestige. I like naming it something that sounds like it's the main title, but isn't quite like elite or silver star championship. Could be kind of like cool. That. I, I like that's kind of what stardom does. Might be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's another whole thing. So vote on the round two of champs giving while you can. I'll be probably ending that around Thursday night, Friday morning, depending on when we do the hot tags next week. It's going to kind of all depend. I'm thinking probably we'll end up doing the hot tags Friday afternoon next week. So I'll probably stop it around then. But you got a couple days to vote on round two and your four matches and your elite eight. Next week, we'll talk about what happens in round three. And what do you think? If you had to guess right now, are we getting like, hey, it's a million dollar European in the finals? Or is it just going to be like, I like WCW title. WCW title goes all the way because it was a world title. I'm and thinking. I bring back WCW. I'm thinking hardcore definitely wins the right side of the bracket. I'm expecting European to beat out the Heritage Cup and hardcore to beat out the ECW. So between hardcore and European, I'm leaning a little bit more towards hardcore because I think people I'd just want go that. Hardcore. And I then, think it's it's the term too. Yeah, and then I think it's going to be down to million dollar or cruiserweight. On the left, and between those two, million dollar. I, I think the million dollars got a little bit more of that nostalgia factor, and the cruiserweight people have seen enough of that over the past few years. So, and the million dollar belt is a fucking cool. It's just cool. It's just a good title, yeah. It's so, just cool. Like, I think this is going to end up being the hardcore title that wins. I'd understand that. Yeah, and Our it might get my vote. Title. It should yeah. come back, and just not look like that because <laughs> you can't just keep doing that well, broken look- down belt. You know what, though? At least, like, it looked kind of good. Because WCW tried to do their own hardcore title, and it just kind of came off looking second rate when you're trying to make a belt look edgy instead of saying, here, Mick, we found this piece of shit. Take it. (laughs) Well, I mean, that WCW logo looked like shit to begin with. Not many people knew that it was actually WCW. You look at that. that that, (laughs) I did not know that until I did the show with Callum. (laughs) Two years ago it was crazy. Yeah. I just thought it was some weird symbol. Some star pattern type thing. Yeah. Yeah, like some weird like, oh, we're the future. This is futuristic. <laughs> like, so yeah, anyway. um that's your chance giving update. Let's get around to some of the other things we got going on here. Let's uh talk about some trademark stuff. They have trademarked Queen of the Ring for God, WWE. I what for. I'm assuming Royal Rumble. it's interesting that they trademarked that though because there are some rumors that maybe king of the ring is coming back as a pay-per-view might be replacing hell in a cell and if they do that they can't realistically call the pay-per-view king and queen of the ring and they're not going to call it queen of the ring by itself But if they call it King of the Ring, it's going to kind of sound like they're just focusing on the men. Yeah, they're being sexist. Right. So they're going to open themselves up to that kind of bullshit discussion. And you already have the Queen's crown. So I think they're doing this maybe partially just to cover all their bases and be like, look, we got it trademarked. We spent a couple hundred dollars on that. And now nobody can take it because correct me if I'm wrong. Doesn't Impact have a New Year's Revolution thing coming up? No, they have uh, they have Hard to Kill in January. I think you're thinking of Final Resolution, which they used to do. But no, they don't have any like New Year's Revolution. I thought I had so I'd seen something about New Year New Year Revolution or whatever. I was like, are you like? gonna sleep on that trademark or something but you know we've had people in the past that have used the war games name I mean, and the Bash Bash the beach, beach. Yeah. right so i think that they might just kind of be like look we want to try to get queen of the ring 
have it locked down. Maybe we stick with Queen's Crown. Maybe we do something else. But the reality they've got is, it. outside of the fact that it's in Saudi Arabia, and in this case, I'm merely speaking because I think it does take away from the women a little bit when they're, you know, wrestling in t-shirts. Mm-hmm. I love the name Crown Jewel. Yeah. If you if you told me Crown Jewel was a December pay per view in Michigan, and you're doing the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments, it sounds great. Absolutely. And there's so many different variations you could do with this too. You could have the tournaments play out on Raw and SmackDown. You could do, technically speaking, you could do this as an NXT thing if you really, really wanted to, but they probably wouldn't because they got the breakout tournament. They got the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic and all. I'm kind of thinking that they are going to do a pay-per-view. And I kind of think that they are going to kind of split it as King and Queen of the Ring. But You think they're going to sneak up and do like, and just... By the way, on December 17th, we're doing King and Queen of the Ring. And it doesn't have to be like a major pay-per-view event, but it will be a premium live event on Peacock if you want something to do as the holidays draw near. No, I think this is going to be next year. Maybe they get rid of Hell in a Cell. Maybe they get rid of Backlash. Maybe they get rid of... Well, we were talking before Backlash. It's probably going to be the Saudi show, and they'll probably just be like, "Ah, because you know it's got it since WrestleMania backlash, so you're getting that." I, I, mean, I think that's an amazing idea. Yeah, so I think it's either going to replace Extreme Rules or it's going to replace Hell in a Cell, and I'm leaning more towards Hell in a Cell. So it doesn't always have to be like this, but I've noticed recently that when trademarks appear, it's almost because they're about to get used. They've done that for quite a bit of things, haven't they? There's like some scripts? names that like they just kind of. Like sleep on, like they'll trademark somebody's name, and like it'll be like nine months later, the person pops up in NXT. But yeah, scripts will be like the day before, the day of. No, it was like the day of when the trademark popped up that they did. They ran the scripts vignette later that night. Um, I don't know how they're able to cut it that close. NXT deadline, I think, was like the day before they announced it. It's weird, right? I like. I think we could end up hearing something soon. I like the idea. I've always liked the idea. I'll tell you the truth. If it's a December pay-per-view, I'd love that. You know why? Because the winners of the of the King of the Ring and the Queen of the Ring should either get the number 30 spot or just challenge. For the, the title of Royal Rumble. Yeah. Yeah. The Royal Rumble. I thought for the longest time, you've got like a multitude of different ways that you could do that. You could have the sole survivor. At Survivor Series gets a title shot. You could have for the longest time, and I kept pitching this every fucking year. The winning brand at Survivor Series makes sure that they get the number 30 spot for the men's and the women's matches, whatever ones they win. So it's like if Raw wins the men's Survivor Series match, it is guaranteed that a man from Raw will be the number 30 spot. You might not be the man from Raw that wins it, but you've just basically doubled your odds of getting that best spot. So that's why you would want to win. And that's why you would want the rest of the people to win. And that's why even more so you'd want to be on the right brand and that the draft would happen and you'd be like, Oh, I didn't get taken off of the brand that won. Good. This is great. You know, they could have done so many different ways of doing that. But if you're having this crown jewel leading into Royal rumble thing and the queen and king of the ring and all that, you're like, all this regal stuff. It just makes sense. Yeah. I don't think that they're going to do a King and Queen of the Ring tournament leading up to Royal Rumble, but you could technically do that too. You could have like the two Royal Rumble matches and the finals of the King and Queen of the Ring tournaments. And the title matches. And yeah, the two top title matches or whatever you want to throw on there and you're done because you don't really need more than like six matches on the card for Royal Rumble. I'd be fine with that. I, I like all these things. Yeah. I'd be fine with this being something that they have at WrestleMania. Oh, let's talk about that. Where it ends up being it. Cause some people keep going how oh, money in the bank should come back. And it's like, then I heard something recently that like, oh yeah, there's giving some consideration to putting money in the bank on mania. And I don't look, the only reason I say I don't hate it is because if you look at WrestleMania, they always do the 
got to get everybody on the card match. So cool. Get It can't get any easier than this. You've separated the pay-per-views by nights. So the women get night one, the men get night two, or vice versa. You know, and then you get an immediate, oh, wow, even if she never wins the title, you know, B-Fab, say a name, is just got a WrestleMania moment because she won the Money in the Bank. It's like Kennedy, you Mm -hmm. know? It's like he always won that. So I don't mind the idea of Money in the Bank returning to WrestleMania in that way, even though I do also feel like it's a great pay-per-view concept and it kind of works better than King of the Ring in the modern era because it's got that instant gratification vibe. And it's very marketable. You can have the Money in the Bank logo all over the place and everything. Like I like it better as a pay-per-view because I also think they're sleeping on the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. You can throw even more people on there and you can throw people on there that don't matter. Like realistically speaking, I mean, come on, I don't want anybody to lose their jobs. We're going to talk about people that got fired and everything too. But you know, when it comes to booking a WrestleMania card, WWE, whether it's triple H in charge or Vince McMahon in charge or anybody, you're going to take care of your top people. And then the rest of the people, maybe if they're lucky, they get on the card and a guy like a Reggie, who is not? Wow, you know, I'm, yeah, he he's not anybody right now. He's you no, know, I barely he wrestling was, on main event. <laughs> what if he's scripts? Yeah, yeah, it could be. Probably no. I think it's going to be no. I'm Dar, but um, you know, like a guy like a Reggie isn't going to get a spot at WrestleMania realistically, but he could get in the Battle Royal. He wouldn't get in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and I still keep harping on. I think that they should rename the women's battle Royal and bring that back. It should be the China Memorial battle Royal because you've got the eighth wonder of the world and the ninth wonder of the world. It makes so much sense. Like uh, X Pac, like openly (laughs) request at the hall of fame at the battle Royal be named after. He might've. Yeah. (laughs) But like that should be a thing. And I don't know why it's not. And I would like to see what a great full circle. If you could be like, well, you know, it's Sean and Hunter and Steph are in charge now. And they've decided to name it after China. Mm-hmm. Nobody would, nobody would balk. No, it's not going to be like the fabulous Moolah thing where people are like, "Whoa, okay, come on, no." And you maybe you don't want to call it the China. Maybe you want to call it the Joni Lawler one or whatever. They'd probably go China because it would make more sense. But it, it works way better as the China Memorial. Yeah, it's less of a mouthful too because the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal trophy takes fucking forever to say, and to even type out, it's like, you know, we're talking double J at AEW. This is add a couple more. Uh, letters to it most people have uh have just taken the calling at the andre or the dre or whatever mm-hmm. so we'll see with Qu- uh, queen of the ring but at least trademarking this means they're somewhat in the idea of doing that tournament and i'm assuming king of the ring again in the next year or so and you know we haven't seen xavier woods as king and they zelina dropped, vega they yeah. dropped that so we're in a void here for another king and queen of the ring. And I don't know who I would like to see potentially win those because it depends on when, when it happens and anything can happen over the next course of however many months it's going to take. But well, I think that happen in the world wrestling federation. Yeah, it's true. There are people that are from the last time around that I thought could have worked really well that are still kind of in that range where if you don't know anything, what to do with somebody like say a Mustafa Ali, if you make him King of the Ring, that might actually give him the boost that he needs. Or you can go more of like the heel type, which I think works better overall. And that could go to a variety of different people, men and women. You know, you can waste it on somebody who already has a similar character, like an Alexa Bliss going back to the goddess thing. Or you can go with Queen of the Ring being more like maybe Rhea Ripley becomes Queen of the Ring and she's got you know, this different type of edge to her than before. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest, Naomi. Yeah. Having spent the last, what, three months walking runways, walking red carpets with Sasha Banks, which I'll say it every time we talk about them. Awesome. That somehow this is what they're doing now. I don't know how they're doing it, but like they just show up at red carpet events. <laughs> and I think that's really cool. Maybe they are working for the company and it's just like a big, you know, haha, 
the you know the company is actually orchestrating all this, but yeah, they're man. they're killing it. I think Naomi would be a great queen of the ring. She'd bring a great look to it. I'd say Sasha, but like everybody knows that I think Sasha would be great mm-hmm. at everything. Yeah. And like Charlotte Flair is a very obvious one. She just stays exactly the same though, so I wouldn't really like that. I'd actually Charlotte Flair is uh, the Jerry Lawler. Like Bret Hart wins the King of the Ring and then Lawler's like No You're not the real king, yeah. <laughs> that's that's exactly what you do with Charlotte back in I'd like to see Natty win it. She's the Queen of queen Hearts. Of hearts. And yeah. maybe that could be the thing that actually gives her more of that personality injection. But anyway, that's a trademark. If we're talking about the idea of future events, we know some more information about some of these. AEW Battle of the Belts 5 has been confirmed. It's going to be January again, like we've normally had. The information's out there for the tickets and everything that is uh, going to follow suit with the same thing that we've had in the past where it's not a real pay-per-view. It's just kind of an extra special. So it's not something we will give dedicated coverage to by any means the way that we normally would with something like the... uh, full gear or all out or anything, but it's coming to to the veterans Memorial Coliseum in Portland on January 6th. So they're continuing on with battle of the belts for 2023. And there's some good stuff that comes with that. And there's some wastes of time, but if it gets some extra stuff, I see no reason why not. Yeah. I, I like battle of the belts. I like the idea of it. I wish they did more with it, quite frankly, but I understand why they don't. And we got more information about the WrestleMania week. Hall of Fame is going to be on Friday night again after SmackDown. I wasn't crazy about that. I was going to say, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, It feels like it's crammed in there. And once again, being crammed in there, NXT Stand and Deliver happening on April 1st. So we're going to get the same thing that we got the last time around, where it's going to be afternoon show. Same week. (laughs) You know, Take a deep breath and wrestling is here. <laughs> it's going to be you watch Monday Night Raw, which is basically Raw, WrestleMania, <laughs> and you've got an XT, which is basically like, hey, we're leading up to stand and deliver. And then you've got, of course, all the stuff that happens. I I really hope that we don't get some ROH show or something where they don't try to screw up like AEW decided that they're going to put another special episode of Rampage on or something. You know, I don't want that to just make it any more messy but so far like and granted a lot of this was cody was very upfront about this but i love that AEW has never tried to run mania they're very respectful of like that is their week we will let them do their thing as they should because it's like you're not gonna win so don't even try (laughs) but i'm not looking forward to that friday saturday sunday block again of being like all right, I'll maybe get an hour's worth of sleep <laughs> over the course of four days. I'll be honest, four years in, it's getting easier. Like, I don't like it as much because I, I'm i in the minority here. <laughs> but I kind of liked the stupid long Hall of Fame. You know, like, I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was cool, but Hillbilly Jim, did he say nothing? Sure. You know what? He got to go up there and say whatever the fuck he wanted to say because he's this is Hillbilly Jim. I like mm-hmm. that. Gotta have an opponent. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that was good. Mr. You know? T being all like, I love my mother on Harbor Day. <laughs> that, was, that was objectively the worst. <laughs> but they are both coming to the Crypto.com arena in Los that Angeles. Horrible. <laughs> it's awful to type too. I'm typing out Vendo, uh, venue is Crypto.com arena. Like, ugh. So that's going to be a busy week. Pray for me. And <laughs> oh, I mean, if you're praying for him, pray double for me. I got to do the news coming out of this shit. <laughs> All you have to do is write your opinion. Yeah, but I got to write the opinions 900 times. <laughs> How many times uh, you figure I write for EWN and Bleacher Report and Smart Cup Moment and then do the podcast for predictions and post show for all those. Really? The amount of times that, that I keep that doing hurts your enjoyment. Oh, it totally does. There's been a few instances this year where I've not done like one part of something. Like maybe I didn't write up like the review part on Bleacher, but I did everything else. And even just having one less made it so much easier. 
So I've thought about maybe potentially getting away from that a little bit, but then again, that's some of the easiest content to just be like, I know it's there instead of trying to think of another whole topic. Cause how many topics are you going to really do? Like, you know, how many times can I run down the same? This is what I would do differently if I could do the roster and, you know, these trade, these people between the brands where I'm going to compare this AEW person to this WWE person or whatever. It gets, it's all tiring. So it's all, it's all very, very tedious. Sometimes rewriting the same opinion is the easiest way to go. And it's just, all right, five times over, I'm going to say, the Rock is not going to beat Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns is the champion. And if it went to The Rock, it would kind of undo the past few years and he wouldn't stick around. So we're going to have a tight match that ends up being with The Rock losing, possibly through Roman Reigns cheating. You'll hear that opinion 400 times until uh, April 3rd. <laughs> so, and, you know, that'll get to where I'm starting to toss out some other things here and there and I'll play around with it on smart cut moment. Cause I can actually get away with that. Cause it's my own site. So you'll see like the breakdown on smart cut moment. Sometimes will be like, what? No. <laughs> and like, uh, you know, Baba Tunde is big and <laughs> Colby Carino is in there. Something. Cause I like to have a little bit more fun when I can, but, um, you know, when I'm writing up a, an article for somebody that is like, Hey, we're paying you for your actual opinion. I'm not going to just be like, LOL ZZZ. <laughs> like, yeah. I did that for well, something. What did I write that up for? I wrote. I wish you could. Like, admittedly, and and then we'll get back to the hot tags. I feel bad for people <laughs> listening to us ramble. But when I first started with WrestleZone, I was doing too much of that. Where I would be like, "Ew, here's a video of Takashi Six Nine and Enzo Amore. This is gross because they're both outed for gross things. Anyway, I'm gonna go vomit now. Like." I used to actually do that because it's more fun and like this is where you get caught up in the whole journalist versus pundit versus, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I should take myself seriously. I'm at a point now where you you know how much more seriously I take this, but I I don't blame you for wanting to just be like, LOL. (laughs) I found which one it was. It was the uh, prediction that I have up for full gear for Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter. (laughs) The current um, thing I have written down, which I might update, but if I do, it's still not changing my opinion, is O, period, my, period, God, period, all caps, enough of this. How many times do I have to keep talking about the same four people fighting each other? Hater and Baker have gone up against uh, Storm, Rosa, and now throw Hikaru Shida in there a few times, too, for what feels like six months. And then in all caps, move on, do something else. Prediction, Tony Storm retains the title that isn't even a real title because they couldn't just suck it up and properly vacate it from Thunder Rosa. Z, 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 Z. No, I... Fuck it, I'll give you my opinion right now. I think Hater wins it, and Hater beats Storm and Rosa down the line. Even if they do, I'm like, I don't fucking care, you know? I understand that. It's the same people. I've watched them fight. I I can't even say I've watched them fight a hundred times now because I skipped past all the matches yeah, so you do that a lot you yeah do that a lot, so i like, understand like and it's still tiresome so i didn't even catch that they were adding that to the card until i double checked afterward because i skipped past the whole promo because i was like that's i'm not gonna watch this it's just gonna be hey you're a thorn in my side and at full gear i'm gonna beat you i'm gonna prove to you that i'm the real one we used to be friends how, was that how much it was? Yeah. Guaranteed. See, I don't even have to fucking watch it. I know what it is. I, th- I thought you did watch it the way you were saying it. All right. Let, wait, let me, let me guess here. Uh, okay, so it starts off with... I don't know if Tony Storm was the only one talking or hater. I'm going to assume it's just Tony Storm. It starts off with just Tony. So she goes, we have a, a long history together. We grew up in the wrestling business together. And in the Indies, we were practically sisters. Uh, we we tag team together. We had some great battles, but we always respected each other. And now lately, every time that she's been with Britt Baker, it's like a different person. And I've lost all respect for her. And uh, I'm just, if, if Hater pops back up, it'll be like, you were always jealous of me. And I'm going to prove that I was always the better. <laughs> <laughs> so you you got Tony Storm dead on, but <laughs> Hater said, 
I was always this way. I don't know, I guess people just didn't notice me before. <laughs> you weren't paying enough attention. You were too wrapped up in your own uh, stuff to get it. <laughs> but you, you did get Tony Storm. Uh, get say, it's the same shit. So it's like ZZZ skip, <laughs> you know. But that's oh. the thing. <laughs> Talking about ZZZ Skip, you don't need to watch it. WWE has extended its deal with Hulu. All right, let's talk about this because I'm going to. I think they're doing something cool here. They specifically wanted to keep it for one extra year so that it will expire at the same time as the rights for Raw and SmackDown. And which makes a lot of sense. That makes sense. You know, it's kind of that way you can package it up. And if peacock and nbc are sitting there thinking well we want the next day we reruns to pop up on peacock and then they can pull that whole hulu deal out of that which it seems in typical fashion and no surprise to anybody else the things that they're most interested in are the reruns of raw and smackdown not in main event because nobody watches main event but main well, events just that extra have- little dangling carrot to be like, and you get your own little extra show here, you know? Yeah, but now they have two exclusives. Mm-hmm. If you got level up and you got main event, and no, you can only that. find them on there. Not that I'm talking about the the new the Luchadora movie that they announced, which I I take that back. That's not coming to Hulu. I was just gonna there. say I didn't see anything about Luchadora. I did Luch- see that uh, there's a show being produced about Bianca Belair and Montez yes, Ford, and there's a reality show about Montez. And Bianca, and I think that that's tremendous. Yeah, why not? I mean, they, I don't really like reality shows all that much like that, but I'm willing to give it at least one shot. I watched that Cody Rhodes show once, so. There are a couple that look like they're made for reality TV. Hopefully, think- it's reality TV in a way that isn't that, like, incredibly super scripted bullshit. Which is I, asking I, too much. I, yeah, I was going to say, I have a tendency to believe that it will be, but, you know. Because, you know, I can't stand the whole, like, we lost the wedding cake, oh, kind of thing. Like, All right, we watched that one commercial. For- <laughs> <laughs> that seems like it's almost everything. And we're arguing with each other, and we're going to have that, like, you know, maybe this relationship isn't working out. And you have that awful music playing at the end. We all decided that we're all sisters. Well, and, you know. and then you have the reality of, like, and there's Cena and Nikki who did all that and actually did have to go, oh, shit, this relationship isn't working out. <laughs> now we got to break up on TV. Ugh. Yeah, I don't want to see Bianca Belair and Montez Ford in a whole, like, what if Angelo Dawkins decided to spend the week? What are we going to do with crazy Uncle Angelo? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're ruining my house, dude. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just gonna, you know, have some fun. I'm gonna be drinking a beer in your pool. And is he in the Reality pool right now? Like, that's isn't that what they fucking do? They do those things. Isn't that like Maurice's mom is like the wacky one, and Mrs. Dad is the wacky one, and uh, Marjo is yeah, her name, I think. Yeah, but look at them. I think they're legitimately wacky. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not interested in that type of show. But if we actually get to see things behind the scenes and do something a little bit better than that, then maybe I will watch it. Well, I have to see the first episode, at least. The Here's what I always say. While Total Divas isn't my cup of tea, you cannot, cannot, cannot deny Total Divas and Total Bellas got a lot of women mm-hmm. into pro wrestling. My uh, One of my best friend's wife, he uh, I was going to say wives, but he didn't have more than one. <laughs> His wife was like uh, telling me one time, she's like, Oh yeah, you know, like uh, you do the WWE stuff or whatever. I watch Total Bell, uh, Total Divas all the time, and she doesn't watch any of the other stuff. I don't know when she stopped watching that, if she kind of kept that going until it went off the air or or not. But she only knew WWE stuff from Total Divas and Total Bellas. That's really interesting. So I was just like, I, I feel sorry for you, <laughs> but <laughs> you know. Then again, it was like, well, if you watch the actual stuff, it's not that much better. So. <laughs> And they would yeah. feel sorry for you. Yeah, exactly. They're like, all right, but you have to watch more than one hour of this week. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's something. I think that the Hulu deal is, I am expecting at this point, and I've been saying this for a while, and I think that this is still heading in this direction. I We we know with these streaming services that a lot of things are going to merge because it's just happening. You keep seeing it over and over. People are just like, ah, this is folding and this is going in, and Paramount Plus is swooping in and stealing that one, and 
uh, Peacock is merging with this and all that. I really do not think Hulu is going to be around for a long time. I think Disney is just going to merge that in with Disney Plus. I think that the hot start type stuff, it's all going to become a Disney Plus type thing. And I think that this Discovery and Warner Brothers, HBO Max, all that stuff, it's all messy right now. But I think in two years, we're going to have a better idea of just these are the main five or whatever. And I fully expect main event to not really be a big gambling chip, but it'll either continue to be an extra show, but on Hulu or on Peacock instead of Hulu, because that won't be around or it'll just go away. I really think that that's all it's going to be. So I think it'll continue to exist. It might. It's not like it takes them a whole lot of effort to produce it. They record two matches as dark matches, essentially before Monday night raw. And they've got a really good formula now where they're actually just going, Hey, NXT person that we want to see on the main roster. Basically a tryout match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although for some reason, I don't know why they got into this habit lately of Von Wagner comes in, does that and loses by DQ. (laughs) They have three weeks, three weeks in a row row or something, but um, yeah, the Bel Air and Ford thing is TV show based thing. And so is this hot tag Becky Lynch. Is going to play Cindy Lauper in Young Rock. I love it. I think it's a good idea. I think she looks great. It's pretty interesting because she doesn't look like her to where I'd be like, oh, that's, you know, you should cast her. But but then she does look like her. She They did enough. It? They they like all the shit that they have around like her, you know, like her hat and everything. Like <laughs> all the shit in her face. <laughs> that's what I almost said. They dressed her up enough that the couple pictures that I saw, I was like, I know what I can, if I close my eyes or if I squint or whatever, I can just buy it. I don't know about her accent or, you know, the way that they're going to position her on the show, but it seems like a fun little idea. And I like that. I think it's cool. It gets Becky an acting credit. Mm -hmm. It gets Cindy Lauper recognized. I think she needs to go into the hall of fame. Like, that's one of those ones you need to get her in while you still can. And I, I don't she, know how she's not in there. She is. When you look at it, realistically, her and Wendy Richter are equal parts responsible for the boom of the WWE. Maybe they plan on doing it this year. Maybe I because so. it's, it's hall of fame for Hollywood and she is going to be popping up on young rock. So that's a tie in there. You can get those backstage, you know, photos of the actual rock and the actual Cindy Lauper. There's no reason not to at the very least. I agree. So I'm crossing my fingers that we get that going on, but I like young rock. So I'll be checking that out. Still really that's curious tomorrow. who they're going to cast as some of these other people too. Cause they got so many other people that need to show up on the show. I saw a, a, an in-ring shot of the nation. Oh, did they release that? Yeah. I see that. Young Rock, Nation of Domination. I didn't see that they even necessarily cast any of those people yet. Uh, let's see what these guys look like. Yeah, they don't really look... Some of them don't look too, too much like them, but mostly the yeah, guy playing Kama is not really pulling off Kama. I thought it was some people in a ring for Halloween and then I saw it was Young Rock and I was like, <laughs> okay, well that's cool. They're doing the nation. Cause I think it's really cool that the Rock is telling his story. Cause like he could totally tell his story without telling the story of Rocky Maivia. Mm-hmm. He could probably glance over that. He could probably glance over I was in this group called the Nation. I went to Memphis. Like, he doesn't need to say all that. It is fun, like, when they do, hey, this is the Rocky Maivia thing, and I'm going up against the Sultan, and I'm backstage with Stone Cold, and this is what Stone Cold was like when I first met him and all. Like, I, that's my favorite part of the show, easily. But I'm, uh, I mean, you know, the guy playing Farouk. Yeah, you know, all things considered, even though the guy that playing Kama is definitely the weakest of them at a quick glance. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah. I like it. 
the guy playing the, the rock in that like the older range such perfect yeah. casting for that like it's ridiculous how good that casting is yeah, he, he does he does look great yeah so that's uh tomorrow night is the uh, first episode of the new season yep looking forward to that um that's some of those tv things let's go to another topic here about the releases from nxt this one not a, a positive happy one when it comes to you know people losing their jobs and such but Still interesting to break down. We lost Damaris Griffin, who I don't think had popped up on television at all yet. He, he might have been on Level TV. Up. I believe he was. Was he doing stuff with Bronco Nima? Or no, might have been. Surprise. It's so hard for me to tell because I can't even remember who's who. Like I typed out a few names the other day, and I was like, Miles Bourne. Who is Miles Bourne? And I'm like, okay, that's the guy who's deaf, and he was the person that I pitched to fill in for another person here. And Lucian price is a new name who or Prince price Prince. I don't remember which one it is. I think it's price. He is somebody who I'm like, I couldn't pick him out. I couldn't pick out, um, Bronco Nima. I still don't know who that is. Bronco Nima. They kind of look like him. And I think it's price kind of look like authors of pain. Like a, oh. like a, like a dollar store authors of pain. And I think they have some potential. Like Ghost Riders? But Demers? <laughs> the uh, Ghost Riders of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a good one. <laughs> <laughs> They're using pen names. That's what it is. I don't know who Tank Ledger is. That's a new name. Oh, that's a... That's a he was a... What do you call it? NIL. Uh, they're finally Joe using this people? Joe Spivak from the NIL program. Hmm. That's who that is. Couldn't tell you Bryce, Bryson Montana. Still don't know who that is either. He's like a nice build, dark skin guy. And then we got a whole list of other names like uh, Alima Collins, Bo Morris, Houston Miller, Gabe Y, Rickson Opon. You know, there, it's Tiller Bucktrot. Some of these sound so fake and then not Tiller they're, they're real names. What? Tiller Bucktrot. And that's not his fake name. That's his real name. Yeah, Tiller yeah. Bucktrot. <laughs> and we know the three other names that they've trademarked, but we don't know who they're going to go to, which are Ika Brown, Luca Crucifino, and Tavian Heights. So it's like, is that, you know, is Tavian Heights going to be the name for Antoine Frazier? Is so, Luca Crucifino going to be Chukwusam Enekwechi? I'm botching that name, I'm sure. Luca could be Valerie. I'm still holding out that maybe. Valerie is a uh, Lyra Valkyria. 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 Whatever they yeah. want. Yeah. <laughs> Lyra Valkyria, Lyra Valkyria. But Lyra I am Valkyria. Valkyria. more towards that that person might just be Sarah Logan. Yeah. All question marks with that, but Damaris Griffin is one of those names that's gone. So is Erica Yan, who had popped up here and there, but she only wrestled a few times. I think it might have been like eight matches in total. And if for anybody who does kind of vaguely remember the name and can't really pinpoint who she is, she is the one that basically was almost always paired off in some fashion with Valentina Feroz and Ulyssa Leon. But she's the one that had like the smile on her hand and would kind of do like the Jared Leto Joker thing. So I'm not too shocked to she- uh, see that she's gone. She only lost matches and barely wrestled. So they've Ruth got Fang their... Rufang is gone. He lost every single one of his matches, too. He looked great. He, if he stays in the industry, he might have a future. I will just see. Let me double check to see if there's any information on that. Looks like uh, I'm not seeing an age for him right now. He looked great. He was a tall guy. I mean... <laughs> If you said, hey, keep Dante Chen or keep Rufang. That's the thing is, I am very shocked that Dante Chen is not on this list because he fits the bill for every single check mark that are part of the people that are released on this one. Outside of one person who's shocking on there, we'll get to him last. But, you know, if you're looking at the list of people and you're like, 
you're in that six to one uh, six month to year one year range of you haven't progressed enough so we're going to cut you and you haven't been on tv all that much and you've been losing all your matches so there's really nothing momentum wise to keep them because it's really shocking when it ends up being like hey you know we got rid of like a Braun breaker type and you're like what you know but when you get rid of the people like sloan jacobs yeah you know what sloan jacobs didn't do anything i wonder if she her instagram post was like very heartfelt of like wrestling is still my life and my love and she posted a picture of herself as a fan with sasha banks and it made me feel mm-hmm. old um <laughs> but no I, I wonder if she's gonna continue wrestling or if she's she did the notorious Mimi stuff on AEW Dark. She could always just go right back to that. Yeah. Like she came in in 2022. So she's only been there. Uh, her first match was in January. Or no, that's, uh, that's AEW. Okay, yeah. So she came in and wrestled her first match in March. Okay. So she G- came in right with the uh, breakout tournament. Yeah, and she lost every single one of her matches let me check um no actually she didn't lose all of them so she loses in her debut to nikita lions she loses to roxanne on level up beats thea hale on level up loses to fallon in the tournament loses to paxley on level up beats sierra saint pierre who's that otherwise known as avery bro who's avery, avery bro she was a she was a, she's a trainee of Flatback, so of Sean Spears and Tyler Breeze, and she's done a lot of work on Dark. So that person just came in for a random loss to Sloan Jacobs on Level Up. She loses to Amari Miller. She loses in a Battle Royal. There's a no contest on a live show. Loses, loses, loses on live shows and Level Ups. So it's like the best thing that Sloan Jacobs did when she was in WWE was she beat Thea Hale in May on Level Up. Yeah, it, when you look at that, it makes sense that she got released, right? Yeah, I mean... They clearly weren't feeling her. It, it's weird. Like, a, the one hard thing about always talking about releases is, like... They're human beings. <laughs> you don't mean to be insensitive. Like, but I feel like with, with someone, like... Mimi, maybe they think she'll be better off outside of WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's young, so maybe they're thinking the thing that they think with a lot of people. Look, you're not ready. We don't really want to spend the investment in spending three years to get you to the point of coming back around to this. But if you do the indies and you go and you learn more and whatever, when you come back, if we want to have you back, then we'll talk about more about it down the line. And it's happened with plenty of other people in the past. So it's worked out. Some people, they don't ever come back. And some people, they come back way too late. And you get like an Eli Drake situation where it's like, okay, this guy's probably towards the end of his career. And he's just now on SmackDown. I mean, you got to like look at Adam Pierce. It's a different example, but Adam mm-hmm. Pierce is an example. Yeah, he comes um, back and he's not at all a wrestler. He's just an on air guy who says that things are official. Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, Sarah Mato. They're a stock like that, the point being like maybe there's a silver lining here and releases don't always have to be seen as a monster negative. It's not it's not like the mass releases in the middle of the global pandemic, mm-hmm. you know, where it was just like, oh, this feels super insensitive. These feel more direct. And more like, look, these specific people aren't doing it for us. Rather than when they did those mass releases and it was like, here's 35 people that we're getting rid of because we want to trim the budget a little bit. And it doesn't matter how long you've been here. It doesn't matter if you're a main eventer. It doesn't matter if you actually sell merchandise. We just kind of want to give you the middle finger. And you look at somebody like a Rufang and you're like, all right, this guy wrestled 11 matches. And two of them were on proper TV. Like we're talking not two or five live or level up. Two of them were one of them was last October where he lost to Tony D'Angelo in his debut in a minute and 44 seconds. The other one was when he lost to Cameron Grimes in last November and he lost in a minute and 46 seconds. So he's had a grand total of 
basically three minutes on NXT television and lost. And then everybody else is like a sub five minute match on level up where he's lost every single one of them. So they never felt what Rufang was bringing to the table. It kind of makes you wonder why they signed some of these people too. And then other people will be like, yeah, I had a, uh, like a Sammy Guevara type, which, yeah, Sammy Guevara of course has his own detractors and everything, but you look at him and you're like, all right, that guy's talented as all hell in the ring. And then they don't sign them. And then they sign other people that within three months, they're like, ah, fuck this guy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's very weird. You know, um, I think a lot of them do make sense except for the person we have to talk about now, which is Bodie. Bodie Hayward gone. And that is the shocking one. That's the one that's the headliner of that because he easily was the one that was the he's, biggest presence on that. He's regularly on TV. He was a, an integral part of this Chase University thing. He was doing a damn good job with it, too. Like, they gave him a character that was kind of a thankless character in a lot of ways. He's basically there to just look like a dunce and be a super happy guy that's, you know, could get his ass kicked and somebody else can then have a real match with Andre Chase. But he had a good look to him, I thought. Kind of like a Billy Gunn, Bo Dallas crossover. <laughs> He was tall. He was enthusiastic. He wasn't like anything, you know, stand out in the ring that was like, my God, I can't wait to see this guy wrestle 500 different people. But he seemed solid enough to me. And How young is he? He's on the younger side. He's in his 20s, but I don't know exactly how old he is. Um, let me see if there's any more information about that on there. Is Thea just graduated high school, right? Yeah, she's like. Was that a shoot? Uh, it was like, did she really just graduate high school? I'm pretty sure. Wow, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't find any information about his age either, just because that's harder to come across. But um, yeah, I mean, he's somewhere in that early 20s type of range. He's not some guy that's like 34 or whatever. But supposedly there, there was like. Uh, there might be some other kind of issue that he had gotten released or whatever. And I'm trying to find out more information about that. Um, the only thing I'm seeing right now, this is from Meltzer. So, you know, he might be right. Might not be right. Take it with a grain of salt, but he's probably heard it from somebody. So I'd probably buy into it. He said WWE didn't like his work ethic. He was late for shows or didn't show up at shows or something. That was the primary reason. It was lack of progression, but for him, it was a little bit more than that. It had to be enough to overcome the fact that he was actually in a storyline and a long-term storyline. We'll talk about that. And the crowd liked him as well, which is always a good sign. You want to keep guys that have a good look and the crowd likes, but it was not enough to uh, in their minds for him. And then Bodie or uh, what's his name? Brody, Brody Booker. I think it's Brady Brooker. Brady, Brady Booker. God, it's hard to say these names, which is, which is like the most 1980s Southern jobber. Name I've ever <laughs> yeah. heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the, uh, already in the ring. Brady Booker. <laughs> he said in an interview with PW Mania, when I came in, there were talks that there'd be an evolution. It would evolve as I evolved. I always felt like I would be taken care of as well. I got injured, got cleared, felt safe, and they wanted to protect me. We were on television entertainment wise. I thought the wrestling opportunities were coming. Maybe I wasn't there wrestling wise for television, but that's just how TV is. That's the part I was really confused about. It was a 45 second call to let me know I wasn't maximizing my potential. I thought I would have been graduating from Chase U, maybe having issues with Mr. Chase. Maybe Duke would have wrestled me as well to show that I can wrestle. I felt the Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes versus me and Mr. Chase match was great. With the reaction we were getting, I didn't think I had to go to the top rope to do a moonsault, but if that's what I have to prove it, so be it. That's interesting, too, because we've seen, you know, the Duke Hudson and Indy Hartwell and Persia Perota and Dexter Loomis thing where you can be in mid of a storyline and they're going to go, Nah, we'll just end it. And this thing with Hayward is kind of serendipitous in a little way, where the last thing we saw of him was he got his seat uh, stolen from Duke Hudson. And look at that. Buddy Hayward's not here anymore. Duke Hudson's the guy. And Well, it looks like they knew what they were doing because they literally said, well, Bodie's not here. Maybe they knew, okay, Bodie's not going to be here. And then they followed it up this week where he wasn't there to wave the flag and Thea's all upset. And that was really sweet though. It was kind of like that. Thea's like, Mr. Chase, 
who's going to hold the flag? And it's like, oh, and then Duke Hudson's like, you know, pull, uh, popping out like the fucking Kool-Aid man. Just kind of like, I'll do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I liked how they did that because it kind of felt a little bit like they didn't even want to release him, which is kind of weird. But they're going to continue on with the Duke Hudson thing instead. So and I think it, it's telling that he's openly saying in an interview, I wasn't maximizing my potential. Because that means they told him, listen, you're not. We expect more of you and it's not coming. So we're going to cut ties. Do you think it's that uh, showing up late and all that he just kind of got a wake up call and he was like, look, I was goofing around too much. It could be. Yeah. Shawn Michaels knows a thing or two about that. He could always <laughs> make it back. And, you know, maybe we will see him down the line again in NXT. If he's young enough and he keeps working at it and all, maybe we'll see him pop up on dark. Maybe we'll see him in impact or whatever. I'm, think, I'm thinking dark right now. I'm thinking there's always the MLW. There's NWA. Um, Indies, of course. It's amazing. There's always, there's so many places for people to work now. Yeah. So if you had to guess where certain people go, I'm thinking we're going to get notorious Mimi on AW dark for sure. I'm thinking we're going to get Bodie Hayward popping up on dark. Maybe actually Bodie could get signed somewhere. I think if anybody gets signed, he would Sloan or Mimi or whatever. I mean, fucking, uh, two dimes is like a main thing going on right now. It's weird. Yeah. Like what? I don't think, I don't think Damaris Griffin, Eric Yan or Rufang are really going to pop up though. I can see maybe Eric Yan. Listen, wrestling is very interesting, right? Because you've got, like, you can always do something in wrestling. You know? If I'm, like, an Erica Yan, I'm going to be reaching out to something like, wow. I'll be like, yo, look. You need people. <laughs> Even though I don't have the biggest amount of experience and all, I'm somebody who you can bring in and go, hey, she was an NXT star. Ha, uh, you know. I but, speak English. Really. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's all you need for some of these shows, yeah. But um, we'll keep an eye on any of these people if they pop up anywhere else and maybe talk about that in a future episode of the Hot Tags. Let's talk about some of the TV stuff that went around with this. Let's uh, just continue on with the NXT thing because we're talking about that. They had that whole Thea Hale and Duke Hudson thing and all, which was uh, Keanu James beating Thea Hale. And Duke Hudson tried to cheat on Thea Hale's behalf. Chase told him, get the fuck out of here. And then Charlie Dempsey attacked and Duke Hudson made the save. And I'm like, all right, we get have Dempsey back. That's good. Duke Hudson's playing this kind of, you know, he's clearly a, still a heel, but he's working his way in there kind of thing. And I'm interested to see where they go. Talk about a guy that they must see something in. How many different looks has Duke Hudson gone through? Yeah. I mean, he's big. And he can talk and I'd be putting more of an investment in him than they had in the past year or so. Because if you think about it, he was on TV with like MVP and uh, Slapjack. Yeah. Like they've always seen something in him. He's in Brendan Vink and Tony something or other. I forget the name that he did that. It was actually some other guy. (laughs) And they were like, I can't use that name. Tony Mora or something, I think. Right. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like they've always seen something in him, so he's getting every chance in the book because he was a poker player. <laughs> then he was like he got his head shaved. He, he was the guy with the head shaving, right? Yeah. And he had the yeah, whole like, Indy Hartwell thing. And then Persia. So like, they definitely like him. Indy Hartwell being more and more of a heel lately. Going up against Zoe Stark. It makes zero sense, logically, that her entire family is on Raw. <laughs> and she's just like, no, I'm going to act like they don't exist. We got more Dijak stuff. Seems like he might be potentially Donovan Dijak. Um, what did they call him last time? Dijakovic? Dominic Dijakovic. They'll probably keep that name. I can't imagine them changing it. Well, the Dominic thing was spelled the same as Dominic Mysterio. So oh, and didn't he have the CK? Mm, no, well, I, think he just had, I think he just yeah, had the K. Two people can be named Dominic. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but I, I kind of like Donovan Dijak better. I mean, Chris Dijak is perfectly fine. 
and I would rather have it be Dijak than Dijakovic because I just I don't know why they added Ovic at the end of that. And then they got rid of Ovic, Do- exactly. Otis Dozovic and yeah. But yeah, I uh, I don't want him to be T Bar. So if he goes as Chris Dijak or Donovan Dijak or Dominic Dijak or Dijak and Dijakovic, whatever the fuck, I don't know. We got more of that. We got more scripts. I'm still thinking yeah. it's no Amdar. You're going to Amdar. I'm, I'm wondering because I'm like, okay, maybe it's a woman, even though they did just debut Ava as a spooky woman. Um, I don't know. I I didn't think about Dar. I like Dar. I was thinking maybe there's always me a Yim. You know. Yeah. I, I don't know if they would change her name to Scripps, but change of things have happened. And won't happen again until 2024. That's right. <laughs> so that's a <laughs> Too long, long for that season. <laughs> Ava Rain talked a little bit about the schism thing. She basically said what we were all expecting, which was just like nobody really paid attention to me except for these guys. So that's the thing. I liked it. I maintain, I'm sorry. That, I maintain that this is a great way to use her. There definitely could have been a lot of worse ways. So I'm willing to give it more of a benefit of the doubt. Really didn't like what we got with our truth here. He had some sort of an injury happen during his match with Grayson Waller. Well, yeah, like it just wasn't good. He got injured. Yeah. Um, then it's not like obviously like his fault. It's not a bad booking scenario. He did a tumble to the outside. Didn't jump enough or landed awkwardly, whatever it was. I still haven't seen any actual confirmation on what the injury is. I was assuming it was a concussion, but um, it could have been some no, kind of a leg thing. Leg. He grabbed his leg. When yeah. He the fact that they were panning away from it as much and he was like not getting up. I'm like, all right, it's either a concussion or it's a leg thing. Cause it's not going to be an arm thing. Like he did that and he broke his wrist. You know what I mean? Right. But Grayson Waller, mid-time, they go on the break. He's doing, like, the spin rooney and pissing off Booker T and all. He did a backstage thing where he's like, oh, I'm not done yet, and he beats up little Jimmy. That's good. I'm like, you know what? They're turning a bad thing into a, a positive for Grayson Waller. Sucks for our truth I hope that he's not really all that much injured, and he'll be back soon enough, hopefully, but not a good way to start, you know? Yeah, because that's what kicked off the show. Mm -hmm. Outside of a promo segment, which was just Braun Breaker and Wesley and Pretty Deadly. But that was awkward. And this whole episode kind of felt a little bit strange to me. You know, when they do certain things where it's like, okay, yeah, we don't have Bodie Hayward and we're doing this, we're doing that. And like Odyssey Jones comes back. They announced that Odyssey Jones is going to be having a match. And then they do a backstage thing where Javier Bernal is like, Hey, you shouldn't even bother talking to Shawn Michaels and stuff because I've got a match tonight. And Odyssey Jones comes out of Shawn Michaels' office, which looks like there's nobody else in there. It seems like it's a janitor's closet or something. So it's bad positioning on that. And he's like, Hey, I've got a match with Javier. And it's like, Okay, that, what? Like, (laughs) I didn't like that, but hey, Odyssey Jones is back. So that's cool. I think Taz Uh, named him. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, it's an Odyssey guy, Odyssey Jones. <laughs> Odyssey Jones, there. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. Oh man, that guy hits like the Dickens. <laughs> I was playing some footage of uh, funny Booker T commentary things for Caroline earlier today, and I didn't realize how many times Booker T apparently says uh, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on like a pot of chicken bone bones, <laughs> like a like a steaming pot of neck bone. Neck bones. That's what it was. So yeah, and I'm like. Okay, I heard that a couple times here, and um, yeah, Booker T is just fun on commentary. My like that. favorite thing is when Braun is around; he's just like, "Oh, no bread, no water, <laughs> just, just meat." meat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's apparently been a thing too, where he said that a lot about Brock Lesnar. So the Booker T isms are great. I really didn't like Toxic Attraction Celebration. Mandy Rose is like, hey, I've been champion for a year and Alba fire comes out and she takes out Gigi and she's like, next week I'm taking out JC. And the week after that, I'm going for the title. Motherfucker. You fought her like three times. Stop it. Did Just like I complained times? about Tony storm and, and all that. It's like, can you move on? Can you not keep doing the same matches? Well, I told you Alba was going to beat her. 
I really hope not. I don't know why they're not doing it at deadline. Yeah, because it's uh, it'd be about a month before deadline, just about. But it's like we saw all these tag matches and everything leading up to this over the past year, and they just had the other one at the last show, and you're just copying and pasting again. I don't care about Alba Fire versus Mandy Rose. This isn't some feud that's like, can't wait to see the next chapter. It's just two people against each other, and it's Alba Fire doing the same thing each time, which is, I've got a bat. Fuck you, I'm tough. And Mandy Rose being like, yeah, well, I'm hot. <laughs> I like Mandy's NXT run because I think that this is the best she'll ever do. Oh yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, probably. So I'm I'm a fan of that. The whole like put some respect on my name because I'm proving that I've been a successful champion here. And you know, to each their own. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but like, I think she's, I think she's great. And uh, Toxic Attraction doesn't work for me as much as I think it should be, but they have some kind of chemistry. I just think it's time for them to all be on the main roster together. Mm -hmm. I just don't want Alba Fire to be the champion. Yeah, I get that. And it's not like that she's bad or anything. It's just that she's not a captivating enough character for me where whether she's babyface or heel, Kaylee Ray or whatever. She's not somebody who I gravitate towards that I want to see a title reign for. And especially when it comes with the Mandy Rose thing, I'm like, they tapped out any interest I had in that a long time ago. So you just keep going and keep going. I have less and less interest every week. So if she beats Mandy in two weeks, all I'm going to think about is, okay, can we move on to the next champion then? Like, can we just have the next heel beat Alba Fire the week afterward and just move the fuck on? Because I don't want to see Alba Fire against, like, you know, okay, now she's got a match against Latch Legend, and then she's got a match against Keanu James, and then she has to beat Cora Jade, and then she has to beat Ivy Nile, and then she has to beat Saray. And, like, I'm not going to want to go through the laundry list of Alba Fire versus random opponent. Just put the title on Cora Jade or whatever the fuck you want to do. Have her lose it to Blair Davenport. Eva Valkyrie. I mean, I'm not really interested in Valkyrie either, but like move on, move on, move on. Give me the actual thing that matters next. (laughs) I don't want to go from Asuka to Ember just to get to Shayna. You know what I mean? I I would argue in that particular instance, uh, the much needed step. (laughs) I think Shayna could have won that belt and you could have skipped over Ember. In the grand scheme, Ember didn't matter. I don't even think Shayna and Asuka were on the roster at the same time. No, but uh, Asuka vacated that title, and then Ember won it like a couple weeks later, whatever it was. And then next title defense, she barely retains over Shayna, and then she loses to Shayna. So there wasn't that much of an overlap. No, I, I get what you're saying there, but I'm just saying I, I think in that instance... They were the necessary evil for that. Mm. They had this thing now they're building up. It's uh, they're going back to Apollo Crews winning that shot against Braun Breaker, but Von Wagner's like, fuck you, I'm big. So <laughs> he comes out, he wants, you know, a shot instead. Later on, that ended up leading into a thing with the main event where Carmelo Hayes screwed over Wesley in the tag team match. So pretty deadly retains their tag titles. Von Wagner attacks Braun Breaker. Apollo Crews is watching. JD McDonough comes over. He has a decent enough line. He says, your vision of being the man in NXT is going to be hard to come by when you have a detached retina. That's how like that show ended. There's a couple other elements, you know, uh, here and there throughout. That we'll talk about, but it's McDonough still in that title hunt with Von Wagner and Apollo Crews. I think they just like McDonough. I think that they do too. I think Shawn Michaels in particular likes him. It's it's becoming very clear. Like, while we haven't figured out all the Triple H isms yet, I'm it's becoming very clear what Shawn Michaels does. And I think Shawn Michaels just books Shawn Michaels. <laughs> no, seriously, like I think he just does things that worked in his career. Oh, I know. I'll just win the championship a bunch of times. 
and never actually lose it, Carmelo Hayes. I know. <laughs> I'll pair the world champion with the intercontinental champion, Wesley and Braun Breaker. You know, like, I, I just think that he does what he did in his career. He's like, I like these guys that are these uh, kind of effeminate pretty boys. <laughs> Reminds me of someone. Can't think of who. Greg the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, there's stuff on NXT that there was um, Veer Mahan told Sangha that his kindness is being mistaken for weakness Valentina was all upset loses this match to Cora Jade when do you choose eavesdropping it's just a thing yeah I think it's interesting that the whole idea is that oh, but Sangha's just such a nice guy <laughs> <laughs> and Veer's like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to SmackDown's results from tonight. Spoilers. We already talked a little bit about some of those, but uh, it doesn't seem like anything's probably changed here. So your muffs, if you don't want to know what happens on SmackDown tonight, Liv Morgan will beat Sonya in an ODQ match. LA Knight will beat Ricochet. Shayna is going to beat Natty. Braun Strowman will take out five jobbers in a um, handicap match. And then slam, uh, Slam MVP five times. Usos will cut a promo. New Day will end up interrupting. That'll lead to a brawl. And Gunter will retain the Intercontinental title over Rey Mysterio. And seemingly that's all that that episode has in mind. But we might always I, get some sort of Uncle Howdy thing. Yeah, we might. Might get some backstage segments that are interesting. I know uh, Maximum Male Models is looking for another recruit. <laughs> That's good. Not sure go who hire, they're going to use for that. Go hire Pretty Deadly. Maybe. I mean, they'll have to drop the tag titles, but maybe they'll come no. in there. Maybe they'll go go for Big Body Hobby. I don't get it, but like, yeah, go for him. You know, at least somebody might be joining soon. So that's interesting. Drew Gulak or something. <laughs> On the Monday Night Raw side of things, we got the Bianca Belair and Nikki Cross match. We got Rollins and Austin Theory, uh, Carl Anderson and Damian Priest. You know, nothing really. That's like all I much to talk about, really. They had a, stri- a trick or street fight. That was kind of fun. They and, did the whole um, uh, Patrick Swayze, Chris Farley gimmick with Otis and Gable. I was surprised about that. Didn't expect that to be where they were going to go. Main thing being on Monday Night Raw, the two like reveals, uh, the reveal and the um, title change. Uh, Gargano's whole thing with Dexter Loomis was that the Miz hired Dexter Loomis to attack him. Okay, what do you think about this? I think it's dumb as all hell. I think uh, what what got me here, what made this work for me, is that Gargano goes, "Look at the bad acting here." Miz is practically walking with him as he drags him away. And I like that just tickled me because they're basically steering into the skit about how bad this is. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I think it's a little silly, especially when, again, the whole crux of it is, well, he got fired because I just don't like that. They're just look, I understand Vin- Vince isn't there anymore, but like, they're just using this whole thing of, oh, but isn't it great? We're just fixing all the wrongs. I don't think you get to brag that you re- rehired someone that you fired. That's just my personal opinion. Not unless you have an actual thing to latch on to with it. And when it comes to, hey, we're bragging that we're fixing all the wrongs and maybe you shouldn't be bragging yet. New women's tag team champions are crowned. Alexa Bliss and Asuka. So that's a, it's a hot potato thing again. So hear me out. I think they could be using the women's tag team titles to ease people into the idea of not everyone needs to be a 500 day champion like Roman Reigns and you will see some hot potato in. I think that they just still don't care about the women's tag team division. And they're just sort of like, wouldn't it be interesting if 
And then in a week or two, we can change it back. And I still am thinking that damage control is just going to win the titles back on Crown Jewel. Hey, it'll be the first time ever the women's tag team titles change hands in Saturday earlier. See? <laughs> well, finishing this up, let's talk about AEW. We got some, at Did least one double major. J E W. <laughs> Spend my days. <laughs> working hard on the show. That is one of the only things that I actually do have to talk about for this because I was not feeling a lot of this episode this week again. Uh, some of the things were kind of interesting. Some of the things were like, let me go back and you know not skip that segment, but like I wasn't gonna give a shit about. John Moxley against Lee Moriarty. I'm watching that match. Moxley's going to win. He does. The end. Fucking whatever. When when AEW does this, and they do it more than WWE does, when it's like, here's a guy that's lower mid-card, and he's going to go against the world champion, and people go, ah, that'll be a neat match. I'm like, I, uh, I don't know. I don't care. Dante Martin's fun to watch, but if it's Dante against, you know, Kenny Omega... Maybe I would watch it if it's Dante against like Hangman Page. Nah, he's just going to beat him. So like, you know, this Ethan Page thing afterward, that's the thing that matters more, which makes me just go, okay, well then maybe I don't need to watch the Eliminator tournament because <laughs> Ethan Page should probably just end up winning that. And then we can just have Ethan Page versus John Moxley at uh winner is coming or something. So I don't think it should be Ethan Page. I've said this already. I think it should be Darby. For some reason, Darby's going to go into a feud with Jeff Jarrett. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but this, let's talk about that, because this is where it starts off with Jay Lethal beating Darby Allen, and they do this thing where it's like, it's a fake sting, and it turns out to be Cole Carter, who's not even a part of this group, but he's there for some reason. I guess he is now. And then it's like, ah, but the real sting is going to come out and help. But he doesn't because it's Jeff fucking Jarrett instead who nails Darby Allen with a guitar and then says <laughs> what is essentially fuck all the people that work here. <laughs> I work here now. He's technically the AEW director of business development behind the scenes now, but that wasn't addressed. Instead, it's just like I'm here. The cameraman sucks. And all you fans are dumb. Things your weak point. And I'm sitting there watching this segment and I'm like, hold up. <laughs> Lethal and Darby are feuding because, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's just, it's a thing. Cole Carter's showing up to fill the role of fake sting so that Jarrett can be fake sting and feud with Darby over the fact that they're in AEW. No, with the, the ROH Jared guy. <laughs> or the fact that Jeff Jarrett doesn't like Sting. I don't like this. <laughs> I, I like this. I, I don't dislike the fact that Jeff Jarrett's involved. Some people are like very much like, ah, oh, that's the worst fucking thing. I'm like, no, I just don't. This is a convoluted mess, I think. I like this. I like Jeff Jarrett. Sue me. <laughs> I think it's awesome that this motherfucker keeps winning. He keeps winning. See, that's the thing is if this were just like Jeff Jarrett picked a fight with Darby Allen and none of the other elements were going on with it, then I think I'd be okay with it. It's all the, like the lethal and Carter and stings involved. And I've got an issue with Sting, and your stings, uh, protege. And I'd rather just so, see Jeff Jarrett be like, fuck this Darby Allen kid. So let me <laughs> help tie some of it together. I think he's with lethal because Listen, Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal were just in the main event of Ric Flair's last match. That is true. They do have a history together. Um, Sanjay and Satnam, you can, we can honestly sit there and say WWE did have plans to have Jeff Jarrett do the whole NXT India thing. You know? Maybe it's part of that. Um, he's literally just doing the SVP of live events, but he's doing it in AEW, which I think is awesome. And I look, Jeff Jarrett, he lands on his feet in a way that people only named Ric Flair usually get to land on their feet. <laughs> like, I think it's awesome. You know, 
he can still wrestle. He still looks like Jeff Jarrett. He still can smash a guitar in people's heads. He doesn't like Sting, which granted, in 2006, it felt like these were two older dudes fighting. <laughs> but who cares? Like, it's got, I like it. It's kind of fun. And I think Cole Carter will do better under the guidance of Jeff Jarrett than under QT Marshall. Yet he's still teamed up with him after this for uh, dark or whatever it is. Well, it's dark. So and uh, Joey Janela recently was just kind of like, man, fuck that show. <laughs> like, yeah. He really was. But it's like, uh, he's true. You know, he kind of made it a point to be like, you know, dark should have somewhat competitive matches because it's 2022 and squash matches do nothing for nobody. Mm hmm. I don't fully agree with that, but I don't fully disagree with that either. When's the last time you ever felt like if you missed an episode of Dark, you wouldn't know what have happened? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Every while, match is quite literally the guy on the roster against the person who's going to lose. Yeah. Every fucking match. And it's like nine matches per show. For where, that matter, it's the same thing on Elevation, which is why I don't know why yeah. one is called Elevation and the other one isn't. I haven't figured that out yet. There's no need for two of those shows and there's no need for even one of them. Really? I mean, outside of the fact that it boosts the win loss records and it gets some people, some extra matches to kind of like work through their shit. But you know, if you've got like Willow Nightingale who they basically just go like, Hey, she's part of the roster and she's up against, you know, uh, Hey, we brought this woman back that loses 90 times a year and we don't bother to sign her. I wonder who's going to win the match. I wonder if Athena is going to beat the no name. I wonder if, uh, you know, Brian cage is going to squash that little guy. <laughs> like it's the same shit. It doesn't matter. So I've not watched an episode of either of the darks in months. And I feel like I'm not missing a single thing. Just I like main event. Dark. Like I don't need to watch Shelton Benjamin versus Reggie. <laughs> I watch dark a little more regularly because I have a friend who's, more open to watching AEW than anything else, but eh, it's not really, you're not missing much. And same thing for level up too. for Teddy Bay. That needs to be fair. Like that's the reason why I don't know who Bronco Nima and Bryson Montana are, because if they're up against camera Grimes, I guess who's going to win camera Grimes is. And you know, a lot of the stuff that happened on AEW this week was kind of just like Soraya's like, I'll talk about my medical condition later okay <laughs> William Regal didn't really say much William Regal seemed to cut a pre-tape where he was just like listen here sunshine John Moxley's gonna win at full year yeah so it's like that's not much and then basically one of the big stories is Cole Cabana popping up to go up against Chris Jericho which a lot of people took as a big F you to CM Punk I, I hate this can I just be honest? <laughs> I, no, like seriously, Tony, I hate this. About the that it ties back to the punk thing. That like everybody's trying to make it a big deal. Because first of all, if this is what you were gonna do, I would have just had Cabana confront Jericho last week instead of being like, oh, "It's a surprise." And then everybody's like, "Oh, this means CM Punk's gone, gone." It's like. Are you really acting like you care about Colt Cabana now? And look, I like Colt Cabana. You know, I'm one of the people who was a huge follower of this podcast and of what he did for the independency. And I'm a big believer that he's one of the people who you can legitimately say AEW doesn't exist without Colt Cabana. The modern state of the indies don't exist without Colt Cabana. I can admit all that. But I can also admit everybody's blowing this way out of proportion because they want to feel like, haha, we like Cole Cabana now because CM Punk is a dick. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't care. I still kind of want Punk back at AEW. <laughs> if you believe some of the reports, like, it means, well, that means that CM Punk's coming back to WWE because what, everybody jumps into those conclusions. And I think right. it's funny. And it's, it's, it's so stupid. And in this case, they didn't have a good match at all. I actually didn't watch it. I was yeah. like, well, Cabana's not going to win, so I'll just skip. I, I wanted to get done and just kind of go to bed. 
like go back and watch it. There was some sloppy spots in there. Cabana like literally falls off the ropes. Hmm. Like it's it's. I watch it on Botchamania when it pops up. <laughs> it's not a great match, and I just don't like that we're pretending like Cole Cabana is a big deal. I will say this: the locker room seemed happy about it. A lot of people were popping on Twitter for it, so that's cool. As a fan, didn't hit for me. We got uh, this feud with Nyla Rose and Jade Cargill's routine uh, going on. It's Why like, the fuck isn't Tony Khan mandating that Nyla just gives give... a back? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't like this feud. I don't like that Jade Cargill is like the, by default, baby face who still acts like a heel and she's feuding with heels that are just like extra heels. So you have nobody no, to see, cheer for. The idea for. is supposed to be that Nyla's a baby face. Really? Because Nyla's funny. But uh, who t- says that? <laughs> a lot of people do like Nyla. Because Vicky still comes out and does the excuse me to get the fans pissed at her. No, I think she just says that because she's a Legends Act. Yeah. I hate all of this. I have some hot takes about AEW, but it's late. So oh, hit us with the, the abridged version. I think that this company has severely lost its way. This is not nearly a shadow of what I felt like we were going to have at this time last year. Hell, even if we go back as, as far as Revolution, it felt like, oh, shit. Okay, Cody's gone, but we got Jeff Hardy and Red Dragon and Keith Lee's here and this one and that one. It doesn't even feel like that because the elite are steering into the skid with this delete thing. I don't know where they're going with that, but at least they're coming back soon. Hangman Page unfortunately got hurt. Kyle's hurt. Adam's hurt. Bobby has ruined all his credibility (laughs) in the eyes of most people. I'm just not... I'm not as thrilled as I was a year ago. I don't even think that's a hot take. I think that that's just sort of well. That was my that was my bridge version because I, yeah. I could also I could also go on about how this Wardlow Samoa Joe oh, War Joe I hate that uh, powerhouse. It's not the main event angle that they keep making it to close all their shows. This I don't care about this. And I hate saying that, but I don't care. Like, I, like, all I wanted, realistically, if we just go back to, like, double or nothing, was probably Punk winning the belt, FTR eventually getting a shot at the Young Bucks, and I feel like we're just going in a circle. Like, look, I'm glad the world loves scissoring, (laughs) but, like, we're going to look back on this as such a cringe thing and because I've already seen it happen with 90% of the things that I loved growing up I feel sad for those that are super into this right now because like in 5-10 years it's going to be like were we really walking around saying scissor me daddy ass that's the fucking cringiest thing I've, like it, I don't know it's not for me hmm Lots of lots of stuff on this particular episode of Dynamite wasn't for me, but then again, I'm the guy who popped like crazy for Jeff Jarrett. So what do I know? And like oh, that's that's I the mean, reality of it. Wrestling is subjective. Yeah. But like some of this stuff just isn't for me. I thought I thought Rick Ross was funny. I see, I, Tony, I didn't like that in a second. <laughs> I thought Tony Schiavone was hysterical. He, Rick Ross gives him a drink and, and Tony Schiavone goes, oh my god, you're the man, Rick Ross. <laughs> Let me drink on the job. Like, I just thought that was funny. Like, some of it's good. A lot of it's kind of meh. I think anyone that says, hey, they're proving that they don't need punk. They're proving that they don't need the elite. Okay, sure. The show's functioning, right? But it'd be a lot better if they <laughs> had them. <laughs> it's, uh, it's continuing, but so is main event. <laughs> I'd say I wouldn't I wouldn't have put it in that bracket, but yes, basically. Yeah, I mean uh the Samoa Joe and Brian Cage thing to me on paper, it sounds like that could be a really good match, but I really wasn't feeling it. I wasn't super 
oh my god, I'm gonna go nuts over the All Atlantic Championship thing. Shibata is a guy that is kind of a non entity awesome. to me, so it doesn't land for me. That's awesome. That was awesome. Here's my problem with that. He has to win. What Shibata? I don't want to see Shibata lose to Orange Cassidy. He has to win. And Callum I just was here. I feel don't like know him. Me up. <laughs> but like Cassidy's great, but Shibata's the man. And I feel like he should win. I'd sign off for it if I had any idea who he was, really. So to me, it's like, ah, it's a guy from another company that I don't watch that people are going nuts over. Yeah, maybe he's good. Maybe he's not. There's been plenty of people who come in and it's like, who's this Okada guy? Okay, he's good. And then you get this other people and it's like, I forget the guy's name, but it's like, okay, that guy slaps Eddie Kingston and Eddie Kingston slaps him back for here, 19 minutes. And I'm like, ah, I'm not marking out over this like everybody else. <laughs> like, yeah, but you see that slap? <laughs> so it's another week of AEW being like, yeah, if you really, 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 really like the meta stuff and the indie stuff and the New Japan stuff and you are really just kind of looking for like Moxley's up against the young guy and whatever, then maybe you enjoyed it a lot more. But even people when you get like Phoenix and Luchasaurus and Arj Cassidy, three people that I enjoy to watch, I kind of just felt like it didn't really matter. So I was like half in, half out and AEW continually doesn't hook me on something. WWE will hook me on stuff and they'll fail. Hook wasn't on this show, Tony. Neither was he, yeah. Like WWE will put something out there and it'll suck, but I'm interested in the story or the potential of something. And AEW will typically put out something where it'll be like, all right, none of this really matters. I'm just wasting my time. And I feel like we're going to get to full gear and I'm going to look at that card and do what we did for the past like four events, which I'm going to go, there's 15 matches on this card, and it's just guy versus guy. Here's what I'll say about Full Gear. We're really close to it. We're really close to it. And I don't feel like they have a full card. Isn't the go-home show next week? Uh, Full Gear is the 19th? 18th? 17th? What day is that? 19th. Oh. So two weeks. two weeks. Okay. Yeah. We have, we have four shows to try and add quite a lot of matches on this card. At least four. Cause we only have four matches on it right now, but they typically end up having like 13 or 15 matches, which I really don't want them to do. That's tiring as all hell. You end up spending a full hour worth of five matches. And then you're like, I'm exhausted. And it's been the pre-show. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, Excalibur, and he's just doing his job. So uh, it's shaping up to be one of the best cards. And I'm like, uh, no. Like, yeah, the card right now is Storm against Hater, seen it a million times, acclaimed against Swerve in Our Glory for the fourth time? Third. This Feels like it's rubber, more. This is the rubber match. MJF and John Moxley, who weren't really even much of a thing for this episode. If MJF would have came out, it would have been the best part of it because he always is. And the tournament final, which we don't know who that's going to be because we don't know everybody that's in the tournament. So so for the first time ever, the only three matches we know of are three repeats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that that's interesting because, hey, for a while, AEW had a good streak of not doing repeat matches. Yeah, then they decided to take that. We don't do the repeats and stretch things out. And then they're like, Storm and Baker <laughs> and all that, like... You know, so I'm not feeling it right now. Um, it's funny enough that the main thing that I was like positive about, I'm like, oh, Jeff Jarrett, cool. Yeah, I feel you like, know. and like, look, I think that that's indicative of the era that we like. And I'll awfully admit, like, I've said it publicly, modern wrestling has probably passed me by. You know, like, I, I can admit that, but it's not clicking with me. And I don't necessarily think. That just because some things have passed me by doesn't mean I'm fully wrong on the other things. I think, here's why I like punk. Because when punk was on the screen, literally every word that came out of his mouth mattered. And there's so few people that can do that. MJF can do it. Mox can do it. 
there's a whole laundry list of guys. Oh, that's what we didn't talk about. Or you probably didn't see it. Malachi Black. Yeah, I just can't pass that. I was like, that's just promo for teasing if he's going to be back or not. No, he's back. He he was in the promo. Yeah. Same words. All right, so same old, same old. He's not going to do anything different. But I think it's good that he's back, considering the idea was that he was like released. Um, I'll be interested if he does something that makes me interested. If of, he just comes back and he's zero. no, maybe he'll be in the tournament. Yeah, where's Ricky Starks? He's gonna be on a pitch. Where's uh, you know, a few different people that we've got on here that we haven't seen in a while. You said like where's. You know, Hook isn't really doing anything. I haven't seen Lance Archer in a long time. I don't know what's going on with that. I think they cycle people in and out, but they don't really like ever announce it. So just like they just sort of disappear. Hmm. I mean, Ruby's injured, but still, like, yeah, poor Ruby. I assume Kingston will be in the tournament. Yeah, he should. There's certain people that, I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't have some people in here. Hangman Adam Page obviously can't. So you don't have him in there. But, like, Roosh. Yeah, he should be in this tournament. I think he will be. I guess we'll update that stuff as time goes on. We'll obviously we're, talk we're about this. We're going to have more uh, people on Rampage. Yeah, Rampage will, it hasn't been taped in advance, so we don't know what happens on that. But the lead up to full gear will hopefully change our opinions about some of that make some more interesting things happen to the card i don't know but at least with jeff jarrett in here i'm kind of interested a little bit in what happens with jeff jarrett i'll admit that even though i think that the feud is kind of bonkers and doesn't make any sense and i think it's messy and <laughs> you know i think it's awesome that darby allen i mean the jeff jarrett just wants to fight sting <laughs> like he's just like ah, you know because he could have Sting's last match. They were, they were enough of rivals in DNA that it would make kind of sense if that's the way they wanted to go. I still think it's going to be Flair. Hey. <laughs> you know what, though? Kane Velasquez never won that Royal Rumble, and I'm damn happy about it. Oh, Kane Velasquez is going to have the last match for Sting and Ric Flair. <laughs> it's going to be a triple threat. <laughs> be terrible. Anyway, that is the hot tags for episode number 570. I want to thank you all for listening to this. We want to remind you again, hit the like button and uh, drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you're listening elsewhere, leave a comment elsewhere or send a tweet at smartcoutmoment or something along those lines. And if you want to go to smartcoutmoment.com or if you go to amangotree.com, you check out a whole bunch of different links for you to follow, different accounts and stuff like the Fanboys Anonymous links. You can find them on fanboysanonymous.com. Subscribe to that YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Be like John Cena and follow me on Twitter. And uh, you hey, you're not me. special fucker. John <laughs> Cena follows me too. <laughs> See, be like yeah, he follows both of us. He knows what's up. So, um, you know, we're at that. We got Tony Mango all over the place. Rob's over there. Dude Felice all over the place. Yep, all over the place. Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. Add Dude Felice. Check me out on Fightful, WrestleZone, of course, Mark Out Moment. And check out Callum while you're at it at Wigmeister14. We got Crown Jewel coming up tomorrow when you're probably listening to this. Well, I mean, technically it is because it's already 1.30 in the morning. So tomorrow afternoon, Crown Jewel will be happening. We'll do a post-show pay-per-view point immediately following that. Hopefully we will see you there. Make sure that you have your email alerts set up and follow facebook.com slash groups slash the Megamaniacs for our live thread to chat on that outside of the other things we have on there because you could always put something in the comments on smartcomoma.com. You got the super chats coming up during the post show. Lots of ways for you to express yourself. So uh, you listen to us. We want to listen to you. Tell us what you thought and tune in next time, everybody. But for now, this has been another smart out moment and we are being counted out. 